All right, we are literal hours away from the release of the first Advent of Code Challenge for 2025. So shit is getting real. This has been something that I'd been preparing for for the last month or so by trying to learn Go because instead of using C Sharp like I did in 2023 and 2024 to do Advent of Code, I'm going to use Go this year, which uh, hopefully won't go too terrible. I'll be streaming this, so if you see me live uh, in December, it's a good chance if you stop in, you'll find me doing some sort of Advent of Code challenge. That being said, if you're new to Advent of Code, you have no idea what the hell I'm talking about. Uh, I'll just point you to the about page that I'll link to in the description of this video. Basically, Advent of Code, kind of the, the elevator pitch of it is that it's a basically um, data structure and algorithm challenges that are kind of wrapped in sort of a holiday theme. And so if you're somebody who likes Christmas time, you like the holiday season, but you're also super nerdy and you enjoy solving problems with code and you get a rush whenever you uh, do in fact solve one of those problems then this might be something you would really enjoy doing uh, there's a nice gentleman named eric wastel here linked here his blue sky mastodon is and github is all here but he's the one that goes through all the effort of putting this all together for us to enjoy every year so super appreciative uh, of eric and um, that being said i wanted to share with you guys a really interesting uh, tool that that had me really excited obviously if i'm somebody who's excited about sol solving uh, holiday themed uh coding puzzles uh, i'm likely to be excited about something as nerdy as an advent of code cli tool so this is something one of my members or one of my channel subscribers pablo uh turned me on to it's basically a cli tool for interacting with that advent of code website but being able to do it from your terminal because <laughs> why not right like who who needs the website when you, when you have your your precious terminal but the thing i think i'm most excited about using this command line tool for is just organizing uh, my puzzle inputs and my puzzle descriptions locally that's something i've I, i've done over the years is i always keep a copy of my puzzle input and my um my problem statement in my repo now granted if you do keep those those contents in your repo you're going to want to get ignore them uh advent of code asks that you don't uh share or replicate the puzzle inputs or the problems outside of obviously their website so if you do put these in your repository just make sure you add a line to your get ignore <laughs> i'm telling you this from uh, a learning experience of my uh, of my own recently so obviously <laughs> do as i say not as i do um but yeah so that's what i'm most excited for and to get it set up it's really simple it's actually built with rust obviously right i mean who doesn't like something written with rust right uh and then to get it installed it's really simple if you're on mac os if you're on mac os or linux you just do brew install and then if you're on windows like i am you can just do winget install aoc cli which is what i'll do so let's go over to the terminal. We'll give it a, a winget install aoc-cli. Now, obviously, I already have it installed, so it's going to tell me, hey, there's nothing here to do. There's no new version. So what you got is what is what you wanted, or what you have is what you wanted. Um, and then once you have it installed, you're just going to call it by saying aoc, right? Nice, succinct, on the nose. And then we can give it the help flag, and that will tell us all the things we can do with it. So we can view a calendar for a particular year, right? So you can see kind of the as the as you're solving solutions, you get stars and you can see how many stars you have and which ones you solved. And you can, at the end of the day, this is all going to kind of create a picture when you've solved all the all the different challenges. Um, the command I think I'm most interested in is the download command. This is the command that allows you to actually grab, again, the problem description from the website as well as the input. You can also submit your puzzle uh, answer. So if you want to actually use the CLI to check and see if you got the right answer, you can do that. Uh, so lots of like handy tools, obviously, that you can call from the terminal. There is one small setup you have to do, obviously, to talk to Advent of Code's website and get the inputs that were meant for you. You need to have some way to identify yourself via the CLI tool. So one of the things it requires you to do is you have to create a whoops, let me go to my root. You have to create a um, .advent of code .session file. You can 
specify this through a, through an option, or you can specify the location of this file through an option in the CLI if you want. But by default, the CLI tool will look for a session file in your home root directory. So that's what I did. Uh, you could also specify it by an environment variable if you'd like, um, but keep things simple. I just put it in the home directory like another, you know, standard dot file. And then let's go back to advent of code 2025. And real quick, let's just take a look at like, for example, the calendar for last year. So we can do AOC dash dash oh, AOC calendar dash dash year 2024 dash dash day actually let's just leave the year so that's going to print the calendar for last year so you can see all the stars you have right that's pretty nice handy obviously i didn't complete last year totally but it was a lot of fun and then like i said the thing that i'm probably most excited about is you could do something simple like uh organizing all your solutions and things into a directory structure so in this case let's say i make a new directory called day one and then let's say i want to grab the puzzle input and the puzzle itself from day one of 2024, and I want to stick it in that directory now, I can do something simple like AOC download, and then I can say um, input file is going to go in 0, 1, and we'll say it's going to be called input.txt, and then for the puzzle, file we can say put that in zero one as well but call that problem.fd and the cli will take care of that for me and now if i cat problem whoops if i cat zero problem md i can see, read my problem uh, obviously you're probably going to be viewing this in something like neovim um, and then if i do cat uh, 01 input.txt We've got your input there. So again, it's a, it's a simple tool. I know it's not earth shattering, earth breaking, but if you're gonna be doing the advent of code challenges and you like to kind of have a terminal centric workflow to facilitate facilitate a lot of the, the programming and coding you do, it's really nice to also be able to get access really quickly to the advent of code things without necessarily having to go to the website and copy the problem and paste it into some sort of HTML to markdown converter um, and then save that file locally, right? It's just saving you steps. <laughs> and obviously, uh, as uh, as engineers, as developers, we love things that save us time and effort. We're sort of lazy in that, in a lot of ways that way. Uh, but anyways, I hope you thought this was helpful. I'll link to the uh, advent of code CLI tool in the description of this video. So if you're interested, you can go and grab it. I'll, I'll also link back, like I said, to the Advent of Code website. So if you're interested and you want to join in, you can as well. I have a private leaderboard that the folks in my Discord are going to be, be participating on. So if you want to be a part of our private leaderboard, you're welcome to join my Discord, which I'll also link in the description of this video. And other than that, I wish you the best in your holiday coding and puzzle solving challenges. I hope you have a ton of fun. I hope maybe we'll run into each other here on the YouTubes as we're working through it. And with that, I hope you guys are having a great day and I'll talk to you guys in the next one. Bye.